and we're, we're going to get right into it because we're, we're going to have to, uh, I think, sort of push on a bit. But I just wanted to make an announcement, by the way, while we've got so many of you here, it's pointed out to me that a week tonight at the Irwell Brewery in Ramy, there's going to be a, a folk and Americana Christmas knees up with Malpractice and Rocky Road, one of whom played with us actually last time we played here, so they're very good, so go along and, and support it. So. Um, it's free admission and it starts at 8.30 and finishes at 11pm, so if you fancy supporting a bit of live music, um, then please get along to that. Uh, without further ado, the wonderful monologue John. In the shoe shop one cold morning, Ted was working very hard, writing out the retail price of pairs of shoes on bits at car. When suddenly the door burst open and in came charging Nelly Hughes. Hello Nelly, Ted said brightly, have I come to buy some shoes? Yes, she said, they're for our Winston. Emma's lived with Auntie Rose. She looked around the shop, then pointed, them's nice. Let's have three of those. <laughs> I hate, said Ted, your Winston must be doing well at school. Three pairs of shoes. How very generous. Nelly scowled, don't be a fool. It ain't a made of money, I can't afford three pairs of shoes. Three single shoes is what I'm after. Ted said, they only come in twos. Besides, why would the lad need three shoes? That's one too many, that can't you see? Nelly touched with annoyance. I don't know, Ted, you tell me. It's been three years since I've seen Winston, back when he was only ten. Auntie written me a letter saying how he's changed since then. He's got a new school uniform. He's neat, he's clean, his hair's been cut. But here's the bit that's got me flummoxed. She says, he's grown another foot! <laughs> I got the next one off um, the internet. Um, I thought the bloke who'd um, posted it was the author, only he wasn't. And as far as I can tell, uh, nobody appears to know who the author is, or they've made themselves anonymous as far as that's concerned. Um, it's simply called The Poppy. Why are they selling poppies, Mummy? Selling poppies in town today. Because, child, the a poppy is a flower of love for those who marched away. And why did they choose the poppy, mummy? Why not the beautiful rose? Because, my child, men fought and died in the fields where the poppies grow. And why is the poppy so red, mummy? Why does it have to be red? Red is the colour of blood, my child, blood that the soldiers shed. The heart of the poppy is black, mummy. Why does it have to be black? Black is the symbol of grief, my child, for those who never came back. Why are you crying, mummy? Why are you crying so? Your tears are giving you pain. 
My tears are my fears for you, my child. For the world is forgetting again. This, this is another one that I um, I don't know who wrote it because uh, the publisher didn't appear to know who wrote it, and he'd have to be as old as Lazarus uh, still to be alive. I was talking to somebody recently who came from the area and said, oh, you couldn't do that trip any longer. It's only good trains on that line. Shame. I started on a journey just about a week ago from the little town of Morrow in the state of Ohio. I never was a traveller and really didn't know that Morrow had been ridiculed a century or so. I went down to the depot for my ticket and applied for tips regarding Morrow interviewed the station guide. Said I, my friend, I want to go to Morrow and return not later than tomorrow because I haven't time to burn. Said he to me, now let me see if I have heard you right. You want to go to tomorrow and come back tomorrow night. <laughs> you should have gone tomorrow yesterday and back today, for if you'd started yesterday, tomorrow, don't you see, you would have got to tomorrow and returned today at three. <laughs> the train that started yesterday, now understand me right, Today it gets tomorrow and comes back tomorrow night. <laughs> Said I, my boy, it seems to me you're talking through your hat. Is there a town named Morrow on your line? Now tell me that. There is, said he, and take from me a quiet little tip. To go from here tomorrow is a 14-hour trip. The train that goes tomorrow leaves today 8.35. Half after 10 tomorrow is the time it should arrive. Now if from here tomorrow is a 14 hour ride, can you go today to Mount Morrow and come back today, he cried. Said I, I want to go tomorrow. Can I go today and get tomorrow by tonight if there is no delay? Well, well, says he, explain to me and I've no more to say. Can you go anywhere tomorrow and come back today? <laughs> but if today you get tomorrow, surely you'll agree you should have started not today, but yesterday, you see. If you go tomorrow leaving here today, you're flat. You won't get in tomorrow till the day that follows that. <laughs> if you go tomorrow, you will surely land tomorrow in tomorrow. Not today, you understand. But the train that goes tomorrow, if the schedule is right, will get you in tomorrow about tomorrow night. <laughs> Said I, I guess you know it all, but kindly let me say, how can I get tomorrow? if I leave the town today. Said he who cannot get tomorrow anymore today, for the train that goes tomorrow is a mile upon its way. <laughs> I was so disappointed I could only wildly stare. The train had gone tomorrow and left me standing there. The man was right in telling me I was a howling jay. I didn't go tomorrow, so I guess I'll go today. Okay, uh, so we'll begin with this one. 
I'm from a place called Unsworth. Does anyone know Unsworth? Yes. yes. Oh, it's not quite as posh as it rounds from, mainly because you're right next to the uh, M66 motorway. In fact, that's my main memories of being a kid, the, uh, the sound of the car zooming past late into the night, and also the fact that every pet cat we had uh, got squashed on the middle lane. <laughs> uh, someone showed the RSPCA rang up one year, true story this, and, and warned us because we lost three cats in one year. Uh, my mum said, don't tell that story. <laughs> right, okay, uh, so the thing that owns with this, lovely place, but uh, they've got a reputation, I don't know what the equivalent will be down here, so under folk are seen by neighbouring towns like Whitefield, and Presswich and Berry folk as being not very bright. So what's the equivalent in Roundsbottom? Rack Bacon. Rack Bacon? Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> I know people in here from Bacon. But hey. And Rack, was that Rackliff? Um, yeah. No? Salt of the earth, Rackliff, quite right. So anyway, those are folk are known as being not the bad. But what we are good at is following instructions to the letter. To the letter. So this is a song that's based on, it was a poem written by a neighbour of ours across the road from where my mum and dad lived in Unsworth and my dad put it to music. So all my dad really had to do was write the chorus uh, and he spent a long time writing the chorus and it goes, it's a tricky one, if you can try and remember it, tra la la, -la. yes, that's it, la 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 la, tra la 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 la. Sounds rubbish but it's surprisingly catchy so if you feel like joining in that'd be great. Now Unsworth is a village. Let's stand. Should I I'll be back, yes. Note to self, don't touch Michael with microphone at the starting so. Now Unsworth is a village that stands down Betty Way. And Unsworth folk are gormless, or at least that's what folks say. But it's not that Unsworth folk are dim, as I will prove to you. It's just that they need someone else to tell them what to do. As my old father used to say way back in days of old, the easiest thing in all the world is to do just what you're told. Tra la la la, tra la 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 la. Come on, tra la 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 la. Bom bom, tra la la la, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la. Now, Unsworth had a brass band way back in '28. One evening they were practicing. And the conductor walked in late As he strode in the band room His chest swelled up with pride He said, "Ian, it sounds bloody champion, lads You should hear it from outside So they all trooped out to listen <laughs> Like sheep out from a fold Because the easiest thing in all the world Is to do just what you told Tra la 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 Tra la 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 Tra la 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 Tra la 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 Tra la 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 Tra la 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 da 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 Now my wife she's an unsworth lass And last week for a treat She opened a tin of treacle pud Now she's got scolded feet Cause she followed very carefully The instructions on the lid It said open and stand in a boiling pan And that's just what she did Next time we have treacle blood, she swears we'll have it cold. Because the easiest thing in all the world is to do just what you told. Tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 da 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 da, bum bum, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 la, tra la 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 da 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 da. That's first, don't worry, it doesn't go on all night. And now Unsworth had a blacksmith, and a mighty man was he. And the blacksmith had a striker, and the striker that were me. One day he took a horseshoe from the furnace, fiery hot. He said, when I knock me head, lad, hit it. And give it all you've got. <laughs> now the blacksmith in the churchyard is lying stiff and cold. Because the easiest thing in all the world is to do just what you told. Tra la la la, tra la la la, last time. Tra la 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 da 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 da, bum bum. Tra la la la, tra la la la, tra la 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 la. Tra la da 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 da. As soon as you sing along, mood, we'll play this. This now, you Matt and Martin mentioned in the first half about Kinder, the trespass, and you and McCall wrote. 
a fantastic song about that, Manchester Rambler, which I'm sure you all know. And uh, Martin's asked me to play it tonight, so uh, God knows why. Uh, Hugh McCoe's here. Obviously, but turn his grave if you heard this. But, uh, so yeah, we could all join in. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester, where I get all my pleasures the hard gotten way. I may be a wage slave on Monday, but I'm a free man on Sunday. Well, the day was just ending as I was descending down Brian Brook just by up at all. When a voice said, Hey, you, in the way keepers do, he had the worst face that I ever saw. Well, the tone of his voice was unfriendly, and in the teeth of his fury, I said, Jack, sooner than part from the mountains, well, I think I would rather be dead. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way. I get all my pleasures a hard modern way. I may be a way slave on Mondays, but I am a free man on Sundays. Well, he called me a louse, he said, think of the grouse. I thought, but I just could not see. Why all came the scouts and the moors round about Couldn't take both the poor grouse and me He said all of this land is my master's Well at that I stood shaking me head For no man has a right to the mountains Any more than the deep ocean bed I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way I get all me pleasure the hard modern way. I may be a wage slave on Monday, but I am a free man on Sunday. My favourite verse. I once courted a maid, a spot welder by trade. She was as fair as the rowing in bloom. And the blue of her eye matched the blue moorland sky. And I loved her from April till June. On the day we were due to be married, I buggered off for a ramble instead For sooner than part from the mountains Well I think I would rather be dead Quite right, sensible book I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way I get all my pleasures the hard modern way I may be a way slave on Monday But I am a free man on Sunday so I go where I will, over moorland and hill, and I lie where the bracken is deep. I belong to the mountains, those clear running fountains, where the rocks stay at jagged and steep. I have seen the white hair in the gully, and the curl who fly high overhead. And sooner than part from the mountains, well, I think I would rather be dead. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way. I get all my pleasure the hard modern way. I may be a wage slave on Monday, but I am a free man on Monday. I'm a rambler, a rambler from Manchester way. excuse when the voice cracked so it worked quite well really. pretended it wasn't my fault. A little song now again uh, like I say uh, my dad was a very good songwriter and uh, I'm, I'm not uh, but I do sort of write the other little ditty and my uh, cousin had a baby a few years ago now and it's got to the age of four and it was having a lot of problems sleeping uh, as young kids do I'm sure uh, you see him grow up if there's monsters imagining monsters well they might be monsters in the bed I assume they're imagining monsters at the end of the bed wouldn't go to sleep uh, with the light off, the light had to be on, and it was just, just wasn't sleeping the child. Uh, so my cousin said to me, would you be able to write a little song, maybe to, to soothe, soothe her as she tries to get to sleep, put her in a good frame of mind, make her feel, make her feel well and nice and happy and relaxed and calm. I said, of course I will, of course I will. 
So I wrote a song, it's called The Little Boy and the Crocodile, look. <laughs> Ha, ha, laughed the little boy as he pointed to the crocodile. He was in Australia on holiday and the crocodile made him smile. Look, mummy, look, said the little boy, ain't the crocodile a funny shape? Long and thin with two big eyes, mum, I think the crocodile's great. Ain't he big, said the little boy, from head to tail, he must be twelve feet. Mummy, I'm having the greatest day, I think the crocodile is really neat. I'm going to have a chat with him, said the little boy to his mum. Unfortunately, she had a degenerative hearing condition, so she didn't know that our feed run. Hello, Mr. Crocodile, said the little boy to the croc. The crocodile opened his giant mouth and bit the boy's head clean off. <laughs> well, the incident cast a bit of a shadow on the holiday, I'm afraid. But on the bright side, the little boy's mum learned to buy a better hearing aid. <laughs> Uh, so I'll just do a couple more then to finish. Uh, I'll start with uh, one of my dads, I'll do another one of my dads. I love this song. Uh, this wasn't on his album, he wrote this a bit later. And it was his memories of being in the Cubs. He, was, uh, he grew up in uh, Blakely, in North Manchester, uh, and went to the Cubs there, the local Cubs. Described it as a great, perfect training ground for the SAS, this place. It was bloody tough, bloody tough. Uh, so he wrote this song about his memories of the Cubs. And again, nice chorus, dib, 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 dub, dub, dub. If you'd like to join him, it'd be lovely. I was a young lad in days long gone by. What's the second line? And I was a young lad in days long gone by. I remember at one time a little wolf cub was out. I'll be filming this. Can I stand up? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so next I'm going to play a little song. Uh, uh, it's called the Wolf Cub Song and it's about his memories of growing up in the cubs. Hope you enjoy it. It's very easy to remember. Okay, join in if you will. <laughs> when I were a young lad, in days long gone by, I remember at one time, a little wolf cub was I, so smart in me neckerchief of red, white and blue, with me bade and power knuckle dusters hidden in me shoe. How well I remember, how well I recall those days that I spent as a little wolf cub so small with our dip 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 dips and our dub 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 dubs. Oh, for those glorious days in the cubs. That's a coach. Our Kayla, big Bertha, she was built like a bus. As a Wigan second row prop forward, she could have turned out no fuss. When we played British Bulldog, she joined in the fun. Half the pack were up in casualty, by the time she were done. How well I remember, how well I recall, those days that I spent as a little wolf cub so small with our dip, 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 dips and our dub, 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 dub. Oh, for those glorious days in the cubs. Well, they asked us to do a good turn every day. I'm afraid some of our lads got a bit carried away. They'd help poor old ladies across the main road, but held them hostage in middle till they paid what they owed. <laughs> how well I remember, how well I recall those days that I spent as a little wolf cub so small with our dip, 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 dips, and our dub, 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 dub. Oh, for those glorious days in the cubs. He does his favourite part in the cubs was getting the pen knife. You all got a pen knife from Arkawa. And there was one blade, one blade that fascinated him on this pen knife. And it was the one that sort of shaped like that. And he went and was going to ask Arkawa what it was for. And she said, and he loved this, he said it's for getting stones out of horses' hooves. And him and his mate John Dickinson, he'd have his mate I mean, he's a Blakely this, tricky to find a horse in Blakely. He used to scour the streets looking for a horse with a slight limp, but they could leap, leap into action with the pen knife. 
The only horse was Pandolfo's, which the ice cream cart was dragged by the horse back in the day. We're talking, you know, 1950s, 60s. And he used to, they got to the stage where they sold this, but they wait for this ice cream horse and cart to go past with a bag of gravel that they chuck in front of the horse <laughs> just as it went past in the hope that he never got to use the blade, never got to use it. <laughs> well, they gave us all pen knives when we joined the pack. It had hundreds of blades and you nearly lost track. I couldn't find any horses with stones in their hooves Well, for emptying the odd slot machine Quite useful, it proved How well I remembered, how well I recall Those days that I spent as a little wolf cub so small With our dip 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 dips and our dum 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 dums Oh, for those glorious days in the course Now try and just brace yourselves, it's quite a, quite a sad last verse I need a moment on myself well, the time came at last when they asked me to leave. 27 years old. <laughs> Not a badge on my sleeve. <laughs> ah, Caleb, said Canavan, the cub days are done. I said, I know, I found a girl guide. I might have a bit of bloody fun. <laughs> how well I remember, how well I recall those days that I spent as a little wolf cub so small with our dip, 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 dips and I. Oh, for those glorious, big finish, glorious, glorious. Almost days in the course, the bomb, bomb. To, uh, to listen and, uh, and, and get involved, thank you. I'll just do one last one before I'm doing it. Thank you for Martin, for allowing me to play again. He's an old mate of mine and uh, I think his band are fantastic and doing a great job. So, uh, yeah, thank you to Martin, thank you to all of you as well, and I uh, hope you enjoy what comes after. Okay, uh, this is a song that was written by Bernard Brigley many moons ago. I've added a verse myself, uh, I love this song. It's not in great taste, it goes out to all the fellas don't drink too much beer and then expect anything from the wife. <laughs> well, this is a song that's directed at all of you fellas that drink. If you think it's all right to get sozzled every night, my story should make you all think. Cause I've lifted so many big glasses that me back is beginning to stoop. But what's made it worse? Ten times worse is the curse of the Dread Brewers Droop. Oh, it's the Droop. Droop, the Dread Brewers Droop. It's the cause of much dissatisfaction. It turns young men old. The sex lives grow cold because they can't put their thoughts into action. <laughs> Appeal to me this song because I've, I've had some of those experiences. I drunk beer till it comes out me ear rolls. And now me one awful regret is That once it was hard as a grenadier guard Now it's more like a wet lettuce <laughs> I've tried many ways to arouse it To coax it to lift up its head But it hangs like a strangled dead ferret That someone has nailed to a shed Oh, it's the droop, the droop the dread brewers droop, it's the cause of much dissatisfaction. It turns young men old, and the sex lives grow cold, because they can't put their thoughts into action. Now I've sprayed it with starch and with lacquer. I have cursed and I've raged and blasphemed. And once in a tantrum, I sang national anthem, but it wouldn't stand up for the Queen. In desperation, I tried levitation to see if the bugger would rise. I set it on fire, but it didn't go no higher. It just brought tears to me eyes. Oh, it's the droop, the droop, the dread brewer's droop. It's the cause of much dissatisfaction. It turns young men old, and the sex lives grow cold, because they can't put the thoughts into action. Now in the past, this were never an issue. It used to soar like an eagle, I swear. Now I could spy a buxom blonde bathing nude in a pond. 
and there'd be no reaction down there. I tried watching the filthiest of movies. I've rubbed it for an hour or more. It might sound absurd, but now to all stirred, though it wobbles when Man City scores. Well, it's the truth, the truth. The Dread Brewers troop, it's the cause of much dissatisfaction. It turns young men old, and the sex lives grow cold, because they can't put their thoughts into action. Last words now. Last night, as I took off my trousers, and as I slid into the bed, I could see the wife wearing black armbands as a sign of respect for the dead. <laughs> And now my sad tale is over. You've heard how my love life's been blighted by booze. Oh well, once I was proud it reached up to me hats. Now it just bites of me shoes. Oh, it's the droop, the droop, the dread brewer's droop. It's the cause of much dissatisfaction. It turns young men old and the sex lives grow cold because they can't put their thoughts into action. Thanks ever so much. First Saturday of every month, in this in a beautiful place, right on, on uh, like on the promenade thing, isn't it? And um, it's a great night, and you get him as the guest MC singing his songs. First Saturday of every month. Seriously, you wanna if you fancy a trip out, go to the seaside, have a potter around, and a great evening is assured as well. Steve Canavan. start that has been to the second half. Wonderful monologue John and Steve Cameron. This, unfortunately, what's great shame is I hope you've all enjoyed this as much as we have because this is folk clubs at the best really, isn't it? When there's loads of us here and great sing-alongs, a bit of laughter and so it's really sad that this, this one unfortunately is, is the last night tonight. But We've said lots of positive things about everyone who's performed, but can I, can we just have a huge round of applause, please, for, for Ken and, and Sir kept it going for three and a half years. Quite often in the face of absolute sort of apathy, which is pretty depressing, you know, when you try to run something. So thank you ever so much for the effort that you two have put in for this past few years, you know, the, for some of it's been really appreciated. Stay. 
song we'll do for you is a song that some, we wrote this good many years ago now. There was a programme on, on BBC Two where you had to vote for who you thought was the greatest Britain. I don't know if any of you saw it. And they have, um, well celebrities isn't kind of the right word for it, but they had people arguing the case for various Britons and Nelson and Florence Nightingale and Isambard Kingdom Brunel and all these people. And perhaps unsurprisingly when it went to the public vote, um, Winston Churchill was, was won the public vote. But it made us think about the people who've really perhaps made Britain great. And this is what we came up Ourselves. We've come from inland Lancashire, those sort of trips that you do to the seaside when you're a kid. And, um, you know, it's only when I suppose you've got children of your own to a degree that you realise just what a chore they really are. And I, I, I'm thinking sort of, you know, when I was a kid of the Fylde Coast and uh, Fleetwood and sort of days spent shivering on a beach there eating sort of gritting your sandwiches and, uh, and moaning a lot and um, I've now been the recipient of that myself 
so I had far more of a sympathetic position with with my uh, with what I put, we put our parents through. Anyway, this is this is a song about that. It's called Tupperware and Tin Foil. CD that was coming out that was, was meant to be highlighting what well, was described to us as as the best of alternative um, folk music in Britain and we, we didn't actually know what that meant um, but that, of course we we're always flattered to be asked to contribute to anything so we said uh, anyway we did quite a rushed version of, of it and, um, and um, we always wanted to do it again so after playing it for a couple of years, we, we re-recorded it on our, on our second uh, album and, and, and we think that's a much better version. But um, it, in relation to that, that first CD, it was, it was quite a funny thing because they sent us some advanced copies of it. And um, there's about 18 to 19 songs on it. We were going on a long journey to a gig somewhere, you know, um, in, in foreign climes, sort of somewhere south of Birmingham. And, and, and we put this CD on and we thought, we'll have a listen to it. We got about sort of half a dozen tracks in, and, and, and we're kind of you know, the silence had descended on the car, and then 
and then this particular track came on that was just like this this woman reciting um, the name of every type of lichen that grows in the British Isles <laughs> over a little sort of a, a little atmospheric mood. And at that point, we realised that, that we weren't alternative at all. <laughs> and, um, and we were younger then, we still sort of had ambitions to be the one direction of folk. <laughs> but um, this, is, this is our, our second take on a very old agricultural folk song. Uh, it's called the Manchester Mall Catch. In Manchester City by a pub called The Plough There lives a mole catcher, I shall tell you how Woe to the day, woe to the wedding vows, woe to the day He goes a mole catching from morning till night And along comes a neighbour to mess with his wife singing Woe to the day Woe to the wedding vows Woe to the day Well the bull catches wise to the threat of the thing So he sets up a trap Sees the neighbour going Woe to the day Woe to the wedding vows Woe to the day My lovely, tell me where do you go, my wife? Well, where is your husband, good woman? He said, Well, he's gone out mole catching, he's out of his bed singing woo to the day, woo to the wedding bells, woo to the day. Just when that neighbour's in the midst of his fun Well the mole catcher gets him by the tip of the gun Singing woe to the day Woe to the wedding vows Woe to the day Tell me where do you go my lovely Tell me where do you go my wife Tell me where do you go, my lovely? Tell me where do you go, my wife? Tell me where do you go, my lovely? Setter since I've uh, <laughs> in the time. The first two actually came as a pair that we inherited from uh, my wife's father, so they were already getting on a bit. But, um, and I'm, I'm regularly to be found sort of up yomping around on, on, on the tops of the moors up there. Um, 
I, I sort of desperately try to wear this bloody thing now, but I know that I'm going to be the one with the hip replacement one before I get this year. But I, I, those of you who've been up on, on the tops there, you, you might have come, if you, if you sort of head from the tower across towards Elmshaw, you, you might come across like a stone monolith, a stone monolith, and it's called the Pilgrim's Cross. And there was actually a, 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 a big sort of wooden cross stood there um, in days of yore. In fact, I think about the 1970s when someone nicked it. Why, why you would steal a big wooden cross off the top of the moors, I don't know. But anyway, um, it was the halfway point. It was the way marker, the halfway point on the old medieval pilgrim's trail from Manchester to, to Warley Abbey uh, in, in Lancashire. So when he got there, it was like, yay, we're halfway there, or, as I, I mean, I did have got to there and thought, we're only halfway. <laughs> but um, it's a particularly sort of barren spot, and, and if you get caught out by the weather up there, there's really no sort of great place to, to hide. Um, and we were talking about this one day, and thinking, oh, God, how did those poor sort of medieval pilgrims get on? In, in, in a kind of pre-Gore-Tex age, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, this, this is one such tale. Thank you. 
Greatest um, non-hit of our, of our second uh, album. It's, it's a song that we, we have this um, sort of strange relationship with this song, and it's been very kind to us. We've probably had more sort of uh, airplay for this than for anything else we've done, but um, it's also been the sort of greatest source of our of our disappointments as well. Um, in in the not long after after the the album with this song had come out, we got a phone call from. From Channel Four, and um, they said, "Oh, we want to use the song of yours for um, for a big advertising campaign for um, the second series of, of a drama called The Mill that they were running." And um, and we, of course, as is our want, said yes. Um, and um, and then we and then we waited, and, and we we sort of um, we waited, and, and nothing happened. And I, I got in touch with this. This woman from Channel 4 and said, Oh, you know, what's happened to this big hoopla advertising campaign for um, for the mill? And she said, Oh, well, the whole the whole thing's been put back a, a few weeks, so you know, you know, you know come on after that. And we're like, okay, you know, so, so we waited and sure enough, those oh, they started massive hoopla sort of TV uh, campaign and, and uh, it was a really, really impressive thing. But of course they hadn't used our song. So, um, but we do love this really, and it's it's uh, it's an old song that Mike with Mike Harding uh, introduced us to this song, and, and he did it as about um, about uh, working in the mills in northern cotton towns, and how uh, that one day a week when you got your sort of brown envelope with your pay packet that made it bearable, and so we sort of took the liberty with, with Mike's uh, blessing. Of, uh, of of giving it a sort of a bit of a 21st century slant. So this this is our take on payday. Chance of a payday. 
This is a very old song actually, and, and I spoke about meeting uh, John in, in a place where we did a residency. It's not going to say that, is it? Um, in Ashton. Um, when we were playing there, um, one of the bar staff had a, a, a CD, like a demo CD that we'd done. And she said to us one day when we were there, she said, You know, I put that CD on in the car, and I've got a, a young daughter a five-year-old daughter called Katie. Um, whenever I put your CD on, she goes, yeah, it's the Twinkly Band. Which, you know, quite, quite as good as it's ever got for us. Really. <laughs> and um, so, of course, we thought, well, if we were Katie's Twinkly Band, what sort of music would we make? And this is what we came up with. Thank you for coming out. Big round of applause, please, for John, for Steve, for Ken, for Sue. If anybody is here, if anybody's short of a stocking filler, we do have CDs for sale. We've got some wonderful new T-shirts that did look like they needed ironing, but they've been sort of, they look a bit more respectable to that. I think I've found the two to display that don't need an iron. <laughs> Anyway, this is Katie's Twinkly Band. Thanks ever so much. Another round, won't you listen, please? This is the sound of a storm at sea. This is the sound of the falling leaves. Katie and the Twinkly Band We sing songs to the far off land We sing songs to the round of the world We bring joy to the boys and girls A 
talk to the ladies, bearded babies, mermaids in cages. Talk to the ladies, bearded babies, mermaids in cages. This is a song, um, it's about that wonderful time in your childhood when um, you don't really have anything much to worry about uh, other than the sound of your mum or dad saying, tea! And you, you kind of go in and prop your bike up and run in and have your tea and then go out and play again. And um, I, should, I, I, I always tell this story, I can't resist it really, because it's, it's, I live up um, on Eliza Street, you know, off Peel Brow up there, and some friends of ours who live around the corner. And I was there one day, and um, I witnessed this, and it's always stuck with me, I just love it. Because I had this little cherubic grandchild with sort of flop of blonde hair, you know, really, really kind of like angelic looking child. And, and I, I saw this, and they said, said, Tea! And he went and he propped his, his bike up against the wall. And as he was going in to have his tea, the bike just sort of shoo, fell and crashed to the floor. And he turned around and went, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I've loved Ram's Bottom ever since. <laughs> I knew I'd found my spiritual home. So this is called Home for Tea. Thanks ever so much for coming out. Um, and please, if, if you don't, um, if you don't sort of follow us on, on Facebook or anything like that, please, please do. We could do with being more popular. <laughs> um, so yeah, please. Uh, we're half of the monkey, thank you very much.